Intelligence, High School Debate. Hello and welcome to Intelligence, High School Debate. I'm your host, Cho Yi Sorang. What do you think is the key to a bright future? Technology? Money? Advances in medicine, perhaps? Personally, I think it's our bright students from all around the world that have amazing potential that is the key to a bright future. This debate program is designed to challenge and respect intelligent students right here in Korea. A total of 32 teams will take part in the tournament, with 16 teams advancing on to the semi-finals through eight debates. And in the final round, four teams will compete against each other for the coveted title of Korean Debating Champion. And that team will go on to represent Korea in the Northeast Asia Debating Championship, where they'll be competing against teams from our neighboring countries, such as Japan and China. This tournament adapts the British parliamentary style. The debate consists of four teams of two speakers with two teams on either side of the case. Each speaker should deliver a five-minute speech and teams gain points individually even if on the same side. The first and last minute of each speech is protected from the point of information. Now the teams and sides will be chosen by drawing lots. The first team from Shinsong High School will choose their scroll. Let's see which side they have chosen. And they have selected Closing Opposition. <laughs> and next up is School Incheon Foreign Language High School. Please select your scroll. Let's see what they have chosen. They have chosen Opening Government. <laughs> Third is Hansong Science High School. Let's see which side they will choose. They are Closing Government. Please come and take your seats. And last but not least, we have the final team, Gongju National University High School. Please select the last scroll. And of course, there are the opening opposition. So please come and take your seats. Now all the teams and sides have been chosen, so let me introduce them once again. On opening government, we have students from Incheon Foreign Language High School. Welcome. Great privilege to be here, to be here in the studio, and we will do our best. Okay, and in opening opposition, we have students from Gongju National University High School. Hello, we're Park Dae Sop, Park Nae. We will do, my be do our best in this debate. Okay, and on closing government, we have students from Hansong Science High School. Hello, we're Ju Lee Jun Young and Kim An Se, and we'll be representing Hansong Science High School. And last but not least, we have the closing opposition, students from Shinsong High School. Hello, my name is Jae Young Lee, and this is Hyun Kim and we are representing Shinzo High School. We believe and that this can always be checked this by applying more technology and that actually might be um, more mind, more mind, it was more limited more 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 the limit in the context of the overall of the ethics of the so that the papers from the name of the letter for those who are paralyzed now cannot did not say that because they're not there can also be assisted that might be attached to the idea that now if we give that ability to everyone then we give that ability to turn off their brain now I would like to introduce our three judges. First of all, we have Professor Joshua Park, who is the Director of Debate at the Seoul Bridge International School of Business. Next, the foreign language learning expert and best-selling author, Chu Sing Young. And last but not least, we are also joined by a special judge all the way from Thailand, Professor Teparit Senamgun, convener of the World School Debating Championship. And finally, we are also joined by 50 audience judges, students from Michu Hall Foreign Language School. Hello and welcome to our show. Now, our audience judges will provide continuous feedback throughout the debate in the form of green lights. When our speaker speaks and they feel convinced by the speaker, at any time during their speech after the one minute mark, they may show their support by turning their lights on but they may also retract that support by turning the lights back off. The number of green lights switched on at the end of each speech will be taken into account in the final results of the debate, so please make your decisions carefully. So without further ado, let's check out the motion for today's debate. Share your thoughts with computers, neural technology. 
It's thought that neural lace could treat neurodegenerative disorders such as depression and Alzheimer's among other life-altering brain disorders. However, some claim this new technology is unethical and violates human dignity. Will this technology change our future for the better or result in the downfall of humanity as we know it? This house would ban the development of neural lace technology. Now, as you just saw in our video, the motion for today's debate is this house would ban the development of neural lace technology. All right, let's begin the debate. First up, Prime Minister, please step up to the podium. You may begin your speech when you hear the beep. This is the Prime Minister. Um, so, from the opening government. And the motion is, should the House ban the development of neural lace technology? We should definitely not. And we believe because there are more harms than benefits if we apply the technology. To, so to, before moving on, directly moving on to our arguments, we would like to define what neural lace is. It is a simple channel, mean, or gateway that connects our brains with computers or cyber world and with a direct communication pathway between an enhanced wired brain and external devices, it would save so much time in, our, in the status quo. But before moving on, we would like to inform all the floor members that our team will be, uh, our team will be focused on the outcomes, the potential outcomes if we apply this technology. So the first argument is we believe that the appliance of this technology would create a clear division of those who possess this technology and those who don't. And these, this means a lot for us because it could create the rivalry between the, infinite, between the ones who have the infinite media and the ones who don't ha who have possess the finite media. And living in a diff totally different environment for these, for these two groups would actually result in human beings to die out in, this, in the society. And we believe that this could be the existen existential threat for the human beings. And, we, the, and the government believes that there are no needs for humans to burden this um, existential threat. Um, and moving on to the second argument, we believe that this area is a profound area where the government can hardly cover. Because this area requires a deep knowledge and background to come and uh, background and it will be easy for the government to actually comprehend how the framework works, but it would be hard for them to modify or control this framework. And so who's going to be in charge of this? Only the executive programmers who would be able to be in charge of it. And we would like to warn all the floor members that it could open up a new era of big brothers. You, all have, you guys all have read about 1984, written by George Orwell, George Orwell right? Um, the big brothers in the story, they supervised people's minds and their deeds um, through telescreen. And we believe that this could act, this, by applying this technology, it could actualize um, the worst scenario where the government could actually supervise all the people. Likewise, um, we must not seize priceless, uh, priceless authority to the executive programmers of the neural lace. Last but not least, we believe that um, the appliance of this technology would eradicate the boundaries between humans and AIs. By applying, it would be hard to devise inappropriate legislations and ethicals to protect human rights. And moreover, um, so uh, for instance, um, the demented patients and the quads who are physically paralyzed, if they had um, the technology applied to them, to their bodies, such as, uh, um, and they could be the new, like, like being a new robot, um, can we define these people as humans? We believe not. We can't define these people as human beings. So, um, before moving on to the um, clarification, are there any POIs on the floor? Seeing none. To, so, to sum up, we believe that um, by applying the technology would create a vague boundaries between two groups and would also um, create division in the society and would be the and would lead to the new era of big brothers thank you ladies and gentlemen 
All right, that was the Prime Minister arguing for the motion that the House should ban the development of neural lace technology. You may return to your seat. Yep. Some of the points raised were that there will be a greater divide between the haves and haves nots, and also that it will mod uh, modify the boundary between humans and artificial intelligence. So let's see how many of our audience judges agree with the Prime Minister. I see quite a few lights on. The total is 34 lights on out of 50, so more than half have agreed with the Prime Minister. All right, moving on to the next speaker, Leader of Opposition. Please step up to the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time and attention. This is your Leader of, Oppo of, of Opposition speaking. As we are now debating on, on the motion, this house would ban the development of neural lace technology. We strongly believe that this, this motion should fall for three strong arguments. Now, before I move on to my argument, I will be making a rebuttal on what the Prime Minister has said. The Prime Minister said that this area is this area cannot be covered by, by the government. However, there are many fields that, cannot, <coughs> that require high background information, such as AI, as neural, neural lace technology itself is in, is in AI. Do you, think, do you think then AI should be banned overall in all fields? No. AI is a, AI is a field that requires many, many background information, but but the government doesn't suggest that, gov that, the, that the House should ban AI. Therefore, I, I, fi I suggest that the Prime Minister fail to point out this po these points. Now moving on to my own arguments, I strong we strongly believe that this motion should fail for three strong arguments. First, because new neural lace technology benefits patients, and second, because this, te this technology enables humans to catch up the development of AI, and third, because this technology makes human labor more efficient. Uh, first, this technology benefits patients. Benefits patients. Patients of neurological conditions like Alzheimer's disease and amnesia, or also people in vegetative states. With, with neural, neural lace technology, we can save memories of patients who suffer with amnesia or Alzheimer's by saving their memories, by saving their precious, valuable memories. This, was, this would be a huge benefit, keeping one of the most important values, memories. It would also provide huge benefits with people in vegetative state, states, as stated before. We would be able to choose whether to kill, I mean, whether to execute euthanasia. There, there is actually a great controversy on, on when to kill people in vegetative states and if it is ethical or not. With, with neural lace technology, we would be able to know, know the person's thoughts on whether, whether they would choose to die or not. It would eliminate the controversy overall on the ethics debated on euthanasia. Now, moving on to my second argument. We strongly believe that this technology enables humans to catch up the development of AI. No, thank you, sir. Um, it could stop humans from becoming house cats to AI, quoting from last year's Elon Musk interview. According to TechPro research, 34% of the people surveyed answered yes to the question, are you afraid of AI? This is quite a high rate considering the development of AI currently. According to the inter interviews done by the people who, particip par who participated on the survey, they were mostly afraid of becoming controlled by AI, like robots. By developing this technology, we would be able to outwin AI because we would be doing the decision making, not the machines. Therefore, we would prevent the overall reverse control, that is, mostly being the anx anxiousness by people of AI. Uh, Point. Yes, sir. Uh, isn't the compound of humans and robots, robots similar to the AI? Because, um, as you said, it is, there, were, um, there are many people who are afraid of um, how AI looks, and isn't that the ground of ours? Uh, could, you, could you clarify your... So, your um, it, so it says... The 15 oh, seconds has seconds. been over. Okay. <laughs> Can I ask to restate the POI? Okay. A minute. Okay, the yeah. time has... Uh, it's now protected time, so just please okay. continue on with the speech. Um, for these reasons, we strongly believe that this, that this motion should fall for three strong arguments summarizing. First, because this technology benefits the patients. 
second, because this technology enables humans to catch up the development of AI. And third, because this technology makes human labor, labor more efficient. Thank you. Okay, that was the leader of opposition. And some of the points raised were that it will benefit patients, for example, those in vegetative states, and that it will allow humans to catch up to AI technology development. All right. So how many votes did you get from the audience? Not as many as the Prime Minister, I'm guessing. We have 18 lights switched on, so a bit less than the Prime Minister. Before we continue on, I would like to once again remind all the students uh, that you should feel encouraged to make points of information when other teams are delivering their arguments. As long as you don't intrude on the protected time, which is the first and the last minutes. All right, continuing on with the debate, we invite Deputy Prime Minister, please step up to the podium. Hello, I would like to make three points about why we believe that the House should ban the development of neural-laced technology. First of all, bi biological brain is such a small part of the overall computer computerized infrastructure that the need for neural-laced may disappear eventually. Obviously, digital intelligence is smarter than biological intelligence. So there is a possibility that the intel will be rejected by the digital intelligence. My second point will be that a lot of people, as the opposition team stated, is that people are afraid of what we call brain hacking. So if you have ever read or watched the movie The Giver, you will know that in their world, they are injected with a s computerized chip and everybody thinks exactly the same. So why I think that's bad is because if everybody thinks the same, there will be no progress. Everybody thinks at the same level, so nobody will, um, nobody will say where if we need to pr give progress into our studies because we will already know everything. So one of the reasons why I believe this is bad is because a lot of famous scientists have, have made their discoveries by saying that the, previ the previous discoveries were wrong. And a lot of people say that being controlled by a computer makes us not as individual, individuals, and a lot of people are afraid that we will become brain-dead soldiers. What that means is because the, because the neural-laced technology will give the government the right to our brain and our thoughts, they can essentially track and control our thoughts as well. On that point? Yes. Uh, you have just stated that the government will have the right to access what we see and what we hear. Now, isn't that an infringement of human rights, which thus makes it an illegal process? That is true. However, even in the state where we live now, where we have internet, phones, we can always check what we want to see, but at that same time, we are giving the government the right to see what we're doing because technically the internet has all rights to the government because the internet has because the internet is a public service not a, not really a private service so neuralized technology if it becomes so mainstream then it can become one of the government's property as well uh, another point yeah uh, following up to my previous POI, you have stated that the internet is a government property. Mm -hmm. Now, the Privacy Act of Korea restricts the government from randomly accessing intelligence irrelevant to matters of national security. So, if... Order, what we your 15 seconds are up. So, I'm going to guess what your question was and give you an answer. So, the government really doesn't actually, like, spy on us, quote unquote, but what they do is they have all of our history, maybe computer history that can be sent to the government. And 
So I'll move on to my last point is, a lot of people are afraid that we'll be left behind by AI. So although Neuralace technology is not uh, in action and is only a hypothesis, a lot of people are afraid of what we would call ultra-intelligence. And although ultra-intelligence is also not a real thing, a lot of people can see it in the near future. So why we would be left by the AI is because there is still a difference between humans, cyborgs, and computers. So what if we put neuralized technology with humans, then people will become cyborgs, not really human. So to round up, we believe that we believe that Neuralace technology should not be in development. Okay, thank you. That was the Deputy Prime Minister. And some of the points raised by the Deputy Prime Minister were that the need for Neuralace technology may dissipate as time goes on, and that there is the potential of brain hacking and government surveillance. All right, let's see how many of our audience judges agree with the Deputy Prime Minister. I see only six lights turned on. Therefore, the opening government team has gained a total of 40 votes out of 100. All right, now it's time for the Deputy Leader of Opposition to persuade us. Please step up to the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Before I move on, I'd like to continue answering the POIs raised from the government side. First, um, we assume the question from the government side as that the fear or afraid of people to be controlled by artificial intelligence applies same to, to this technology, the neural lace technology. However, we'd like to point out that neural lace technology definitely something different from the, the general AI, general conception of AI. We'd like to point out that the decision or mind or mental state is wholly only one of the humans, not the machines. So this is definitely differs from the general perception of artificial intelligence. As the, as the deputy leader of the opposition, I like to rebut what the government side has said. For, uh, so several points from the government side. First, they point out if um, this technology is being executed or promoted, there can be there will be no progress, no progress because everybody will think as the same as just like a machine. However, we like to. Oh, however, we like to also point it out again with the rebuttal that I gave to the the answer that I gave as the answer of the point of information that the government side has raised. Uh, we strongly believe that this the neural lace technology definitely differs from the one of the uh, general perception of the artificial intelligence because the mind or decision or mental state is only one of the humans. Also, the government side has pointed out that there can be the gap between the one who has the actual technology and who doesn't have it. However, and also, they also mentioned about the new the fear of the new era of the Big Brother. I mean, uh, we accept this idea as they are afraid of the harm to the privacy, even by, even um, done by the government. However, the opposition side strongly believes that this kind of afraid or fear can be re um, can be prevented by strengthening the regulations related to this kind of actions. For example, we can. Uh, make a new law or new legislation uh, regarding the the share of the technology, <coughs> so it can prevent the 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 focus or the over concentration of the possession of the technology. Also, if by strengthening the legislation related to the like over like wrong in the negative use of this technology, we can make another kind of legislation to pr prevent this, or we can strengthen the transparency of the use of these information that are gathered. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the opposition side still strongly believes that the neural lace technology should not be banned. Because first, neural lace technology benefits patients. Second, neural lace technology enables humans to catch up the devel development of artificial intelligence. And lastly, I'd like to present this argument. Ladies and gentlemen, we strongly believe that neural lace technology makes human labor more efficient. Ladies and gentlemen, let's keep in mind that neural lace technology is part and type of artificial intelligence technology. According to the survey of TechPro Research on July 2015, 63% of such subjects said that yes or positive is the question that is AI good for business? And we, we, uh, we strongly believe, and there is a kind of statistic, that the major reason for this is because of the efficiency that can be caused by the use of the artificial intelligence. 
Ladies and gentlemen, with the, with the artificial intelligence, like more of many kind of technology that are being developed in our society, uh, they are developed for more efficient work in our society. Um, can you imagine how our society will be more efficient or convenient with the use of the neural neural lace technology? Let's think about the technology called the cloud. Everybody, like many people say that it's comfortable or convenient because cell phones or other many digital devices are connected to connected with each other, so it is easier to share or gather. No thanks, sir. Points. No thanks, sir. Um, since it is uh, related to each other or connected to each other in order to share or gather Im images, music, and many other informations. Ladies and gentlemen, this kind of simple technology makes our society much efficient and much more convenient. And can you imagine like, how big impact the neural lace technology is going to give to our society? Um, we strongly believe that this technology will greatly reduce the time and the effort that is put to many labors. So, like, for example, we can just control the computer or the machine just by only thinking. This is a great reduce of the time and the effort. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, so like this, the, the neural lace technology is far more convenient and efficient than the simple technology in our society. Ladies and gentlemen, as a deputy leader of the opposition, I'd like to emphasize our three arguments again. Ladies and gentlemen, the opposition side strongly believes that neural lace technology uh, benefits patients and also it enables <coughs> humans to catch up the development of artificial intelligence. And lastly, neural lace Neural lace technology makes human labor more efficient, so this motion should fail. Thank you. All right, that was the deputy leader of opposition, and some of the points raised by the deputy leader of opposition include that human labor may become more efficient, and that fear related to a new era of Big Brother may be mitigated by strengthening related regulations. All right, let's see how many of our audience judges agreed. All right, the count is 33 out of 50. That brings a total of the opening opposition to 51 out of 100 lights. The first two teams have delivered their arguments, so let's see what the judges have to say on the debate so far. Professor Semangun? I'll be talking on the debate tactics in this debate. I also think that POIs are extremely important and be used as strong strategies, be able to enhance your own side and be able to engage other side. So, just don't jump up and just speak out there. Be able to think what to speak. And you have only 15 seconds. So you have to be very sure, be clear what you're saying uh, in the debate per se. Speaking fluently, it's not debate. So I have to be able to be logical, explain, be reasonable, and be fair. In terms of when you're delivering argumentation, you need to do them fully as opposed to just giving the labels. So after you've given the label of your argument, oftentimes I'm left with the question of why or how. Similar uh, things go to opening opposition as well. So for example, if you're giving arguments such as um, human, brain, uh, human beings can catch up to AI and it is a matter of their own decision, I'm not quite sure I'm understanding that point. How is this so? Um, how is this actually a relevant argument? So be more uh, explanatory in terms of your points. Secondly, be far more responsive. So I do feel that both teams could have done a better job responding, but at the same time, uh, there are ways in which you can try to preempt uh, arguments such as this. So being more responsive would be my second point. I have a question for the opposition team. Do you guys have somewhere to be? Like, are you guys in a hurry? Like, you have to get it out there and then go have dinner maybe, maybe have a date with your girlfriend or boyfriend <laughs> after? Because you, when you guys stood up, you almost felt like you don't want to be here. Debate is a, a discourse, it's a, it's a conversation, right? So the moment you don't look like you want to speak to other people, the lights are not going to come on, right? And for the government team, so in debate, what's important is not amount of information. You think five information is better than one? When you have five minutes, it's often not. Uh, the moment the people can't follow you, you've lost. So I'm not saying you've lost this time, but when you do that, you lose. OK, thank you. Thank you for your insight. All right, let's move on to the second half of the debate, starting with the member of government. Please step up to the podium. Once again, you may begin your speech at the sound of the beep. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As the member of government, I would first like to refute a point made by the opening opposition. Uh, first of all, the opening opposition suggested that humans are bound to become house cats of AI, and that neural laces could be a remedy to that problem. Well, 
Unfortunately, AI is a technology aimed at giving computers human-level intelligence that could function independently in a spontaneous manner without human intervention. But, but so it's not logical to replace AIs with neurolasis when the computer connected to the brain, in essence, is controlled directly by the user, who is a human. Neurolasis are a totally different line of technology and should not be linked to artificial intelligence. Next, I have an extension to make on, an opening uh, on our opening government's argument regarding social diversion. The human race has a long history of inequality and injustice imposed upon the weak and the minority, including racial discrimination and negative attitudes towards sexual minorities. Given that neurolasis have the ability to evaluate... Yeah. Yes, you, you stated that you give computers of human intelligence, but doesn't, that doesn't the example of AlphaGo winning Isidore contradict to your saying? Uh, could you clarify your, question, clarify your question a bit? Yes. <laughs> you said that by, with neural latency technology, you give human intelligence by giving computers human intelligence, but doesn't the example of AlphaGo winning Isidore contradict to your saying? Uh, I, what I said was that Basically, neural uh, laces cannot be a solution to that problem. It did not say that humans are not bound to become house cats. That might be a fact. But I'm saying that neural laces are not a very valid solution. Okay, so uh, the extension is that... Where did I leave off? Uh, so basically, yes, negative attitudes towards sexual minorities. Given that neural laces have the ability to enhance the normal human brain, it can be predicted that those enhanced people, basically those superhumans, will be preferred to those without the lace in competitive situations such as job hirings. And just think about a condition, just think, about, think about a situation like in a math test. Those, you know, right now, as of now, most all of us, all of us have the normal human brain. So we're all fair. We study math and we take the test and we get equal results based on how hard we worked. Uh, however, when we bring in the neural lace, those with the lace will have an enormous advantage over those who don't, because their mental capacity is increased. Is increased. Um, yeah. And finally, I'd like, I'd like to present point, just... Sir. Yeah. Like you mentioned about the like, and differences, like the kind of gap between the, actually the one who has the technology and not. Yeah. However, we'd like to ask the question about, like, however, uh, what about the situation where the technology is well shared around our society? Uh, Unfortunately, just think about smartphones. In Korea, most people actually do possess a smartphone and are connected to the network and the social networking system, whatever that is. Uh, however, most people in the world, if you look at the statistics, they don't really have the smartphone, meaning that though we can regionally increase, uh, basically, the usage of these neural laces... On that point? Yeah. Uh, wait, no, no, reject. Uh, should I finish my answer? So, uh, it's virtually impossible to provide everyone with this technology. Uh, <clears throat> Finally, I'd like to present just one new argument for the motion. We believe that the use of uh, neurolysis in, the, in warfare is inevitable. Uh, though enhanced soldiers, basically soldiers with this neurolase, may have positive effects on national security at first, just like nuclear weapons, the usage of, of neurolysis in warfare Will become will cause an everlasting will become an everlasting threat to global peace due to lack of control. Thank you. Are there any additional POIs? Uh, we are in the protected time, so we okay. can't take additional POIs. You may take your seat. Right. That was the member of government, and some of the points raised by the member of government were that there may be threats to national security, and that it will be impossible to give the technology to every single person. So how many audience members agreed? I see a lot of lights on. And we have the numbers, it is 42. 42 lights have been switched on out of 50. So just eight have disagreed. And now we're going to hear from the member of opposition. Please step forward to the podium. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the member of the opposition. Um, first off, I would like to rebut some of the, um, some of the things said by the government side. The government side has said that the government would, would see what, what everyone is doing. But the, member of, but the member of government said that there's not enough, well, the technology won't go around to everyone. So I think there is a lack of consistency. 
I would first like to support the leader and deputy leader of the opposition. And they said that the neural lace will be efficient. And this could be specified to education. People are smart and creative, but they lack memory and speed compared with AI. But if we add all the pros in one, there will be an enhancement in education. Also, there is the speed of information transmission. Let's say there is an emergency that needs to be sent quickly. People without the device wouldn't be given the information really quickly. Therefore, having the neural lace as a quick deliverer can be efficient in our lives. Does yeah. anybody have any? Yeah, I, yes, sir. Uh, basically, I suggested that uh, the people with the technology will have their privacy uh, breached. Not everyone. The people with the technology will have breached uh, security. I'm okay. making a rebuttal on your first point that you made. Uh, can okay. you understand? Yeah. But I, and also, um, next, I would like to point out some things that the government side has said. <laughs> You guys said that people are afraid of technology, that they are, you are afraid that technology will take over humans. But there is, the, there is also the fear of cars, and we don't ban cars because it is efficient. It can still be harmful, there could be crashes, but it is efficient and we can benefit from it. Point. Can cars violate um, human, basic human dignity? We believe that cars and the neural lace is in the different dimension. Okay. It is in different dimension, but just because something can be harmful doesn't mean that we have to ban it totally. And there are some positive, there are a lot of positive sides that make it, that make it better to to develop neural laces. Yes, sir. Doesn't, um, doesn't um, the opposition believe that it exceeds the bounds of harmful, instead it goes beyond to the violation of human rights or violation of the privacy? Could you restate it, please? So you claim that it, ex um, it is harmful, both cars and the, the technology. Yes. But don't you think that um, it is beyond the um, beyond the concept of harmful, but instead it can actually um, violate human rights and violates our privacy. So don't you think that it's in the different dimension? It is in different dimension, but we believe that having this neural lace can, can help a lot in, in our lives. Thank you. Okay, that was the member of opposition. And one of the points raised was that it will allow for quicker transfer of information. So let's see how many of our audience judges agree with the member of opposition. Zero lights have been switched on. That's quite a contrast to the member of government who received 42 lights. All right, let's continue on. Next, the government whip. Please step up to the podium. <coughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As the government whip, I'd like to rebut three points of the closing opposition before we make our final remarks. First, the opposition has uh, said that the creation of legislation can prevent misuse of this technology. But we would like to say, um, we like to show real life examples like drugs or crimes. Laws can't completely prevent these kinds of misuse of technology, and neural lace technology has a far too cost to say that mm, the good parts of neural lace technology can cover the bad parts. Secondly, neural technology is different from AI. The fact that it can be misused and change human society remains the same. So we think that it's inappropriate to say that neural technology is different from artificial intelligence and say that it is not appropriate to worry uh, the consequences of using artificial intelligence. Finally, we would like to refute the fact that um, this technology can improve work productivity. Similar productivity can be achieved with the technology of Internet of Things, as the physical requirement of thinking and moving a finger is not that much different. <coughs> now I would like to summarize the government's proposition on today's motion. Uh, on that point? Uh, a little later, please. 
We represent the side wishing to uh, ban the development of neural lace technology. Neural lace technology seems very promising and offers many new technologies only uh, seen in science fiction. However, this leads to an opening into what for centuries man has considered his own. First, the privacy of thought cannot be promised with the ability to fully survey the brain. Being able to monitor the brain using physical measures have, may have medical advantages, we admit that. But keep in mind that the cognitive activity too can be surveilled. Second, Wireless adaption of the technology makes it prone to hacking. Security problems arise even without wireless adaption, and it can lead to something called brain hacking. Third, the very idea of injecting a mesh into the brain causes countless mechanical and ethical problems. The uses of meshes give dangers to the physical form of the brain and can directly damage the brain. Ethical problems not stop at questioning the purity of human cognitive. Fourth, discrimination between the possessors of this technology and the ones less fortunate would naturally rip society apart. Last but not least, we have concerns of this mis the misuse of this technology towards warfare, like the usage of nuclear technology. Please bear in mind that while the process has not yet brought us to an apocalypse, we must be careful in taking new technologies and precaution, uh, make precautions before we accept these. Taking progress too fast can damage our human society and bring us to points that we cannot return. Thank you for your time. Uh, I would like to take POIs first. Uh, yes, you have said that the, the physical requirement of moving a finger and not moving a finger is not that significant. But for those who are like paralyzed in their upper body, then they might not be able to access some features provided by internet on things. Uh, those who are paralyzed and cannot use these physical features can also be assisted using the technology that we have today. It does not require uh, using meshes and injecting it inside the brain to be able to use uh, these Internet of Things and technologies such as that. Point. Yes. Can you give specific examples of what the technologies currently is there? Uh, for example, we have. Uh, we have hearing aids and uh, direct in injections into the brain using neural technology, and uh, it is possible to simulate what uh, this technology promises to us. On that point. Mm. Oh. Uh, we're now into protected time, so I'll ask you to sit down. Yes. Okay. So that was the last speaker of the government bench, the government whip. <laughs> and one of the points raised was that similar labor efficiency can be achieved with Internet of Things. All right, now let's see how many of our audience judges agree with the government whip. The count is 26. So a bit over half have turned their lights on and shown support. Therefore, the closing government team has gained a total of 68 votes out of 100. We finally move on to the last speaker of the debate, the opposition whip. Please come forward to the podium. Hello, fellow, hello, Mr. Speaker, fellow debaters, and honorable members of the jury. I am the government. Op I am the whip of the government, uh, the opposition. First, I would like to begin by providing a rebuttal for that has been made by the closing government. The government has provided an assertion on the matters of benefits provided, which will then make the, which will then make the society unfair for those who do not have the benefits. Now, what will happen if we give the benefits? To those who lack, if, to those who lack in other places, we already have laws that provides people more with those who have less. So which, so which provides more to those who have less? So if we take the map, so if we take this technology into the giving more part, then we might be able to people, we might be able to help people who have less, which means that we might be able to help them move. We might be able to help them, I don't know, think clearly. Uh, POI, uh, yes. is there evidence that neural uh, laces are the only way we could help out the less? There could be alternatives, for sure. Yes, there could be alternatives, but by empowering the brain to move certain muscles, or by empowering the brain to think in certain ways that people cannot, that is going to be the very fundamental solution to such problems. Point. Yes. Um, the, the government whip has claimed that um, it is the government's rule to actually provide those who are um, impoverished, financially impoverished, but um, does the ability to think clearly and think deeply, um, do you believe that there are clear links between um, 
thinking clearly and okay, being aided in financially. Seconds, yes. Yes, for example, for those who have dyslexia, which means that you cannot read clearly, then by giving people certain Euralist technologies that may help them to use their eyes in a better way might, them, might help people to earn information clearly. May I move on? All right, then. Uh, could I go to OPI? Yes. Could I go to OPI? Uh, uh, there is a technology called deep brain stimulation that could replace this technology without the addition of Mishworks. And also the cons of this technology, I believe, as we believe, outweighs the pros of this neural lace technology. Yes, the deep brain stimulation, if I believe, was technology that developed in the 1987 to help those, to help, to help those get relieved of their tremor effects for those who have Parkinson's disease. And that is a very limited way, so limited way of solution because in the end, that did not solve the disease, that only cured the symptoms. And also, the opposition have but the opposition has made some relevant and productive points that will be used very effectively in the development of real lace technology. For example, the matters of hacking, so thus the matters of securing one's brain is a very important point that should be considered. However, they have failed, uh, they have lacked consistency in their argument by first stating that the internet is government privacy and then moving on to say that the government only has right to access the information stored by internet service providers. And also, they have, they have kept on talking about the, the, uh, the government has talked about that the, that, pri that certain surveillance that's providing people with the neural technology will help them, will only make the, gov will only make the poverty gap bigger. But as I have stated in my rebuttal, we believe, yes. So the benefits in the medical field ve look very obvious, but I have a general question. If it be came to life, is there a way for us to turn off the neural lace technology? Well, yes. I believe that the opening government has provided the evidence, that the evidence of George Orwell's 1984. Now, in 1984, some people have, asked, have the ability to turn off their tele television or anyway. Now, if we give that ability to everyone, if we give that ability to turn off their neural, neural laces when they, whenever they want, then that might be a very significant move in securing, private, in securing privacy. Now, these, to summarize the debate, we have, we believe that we have won this debate because we have shown certain integrity of the arguments that the, op the opening that the government has not been able to show. Thank you. All right, that was the opposition whip from the closing opposition team, and one of the points raised were that this technology will help patients, for example, those with dyslexia. So let's see the audience judge response. Let's see how many lights have been turned on in support for the opposition whip. Now, for reference, the government whip received 26 out of 50 lights. So let's see how this compares. So we have the final count, and it is 38 lights out of 50. Okay, so more than the government whip. And that also brings the closing opposition team's total score to 38 out of 100. Now, while our three judges are coming up with a final decision, let's see which side has done a better job at persuading our audience. So if you argue for the motion that the House should ban the development of neural lace technology, please turn your lights on. But if you think the opposition teams did better, then please leave your lights off. Keep it as it is. All right? On the count of three, please make your decision. One, two, three. All right, and we have the final results. So 32 out of 50 audience judges think that we should ban the development of neural lace technology, while only 18 oppose it. So the final decision has been made. But before I announce the results, let's hear from the judges once again. First, Professor Joshua Park. So closing government, some of the arguments that you're providing isn't entirely new. So for example, when you talk about history of discrimination, that's a concept that was originated in the opening government. That said, you're taking what was existing in the opening half, um, 
merely perhaps as a label and not really expanded upon, you're giving an additional analysis and providing a clearer uh, delineation of what this actually means. On the other hand, closing opposition, we do feel that you are bringing in some uh, good responses. So I think actually your strongest aspects are your responses to the government teams. So in the initial point of information regarding security laws in the opening half, I thought that was a, a nice avenue to follow. Um, as for me, instead of commenting on teams, I have one comment for both of the members and I have one comment for both of the whips. So for the members, um, who is the enemy here? Who is the enemy in a debate? The other side. No, it's the problem. Okay, so the moment you look like you're fighting to win, you look like a bad debater. So that's one comment I have for both of the members. So you have to, the whip's job is not to go through point by point all the, all the logical steps of the argument. It's to make what's being said human. So the guys are sitting next to you, guys sitting around you feel something. And I don't feel like either of you knew that that was your job. Think about the consistency, and I think you will do much better next time. Thank you. I think in this debate, we see clearly four main ideas from each team. The debate, whoever won this round, has two main difficulty, and I think the team that has won this round presented those two skills. One, it be able to explain the future and how that word future would be. This is quite difficult in the sense that you have to have enough imagination not only, but be able to use examples of today that relates to the future. But secondly, it's a hard part. Because if you are not cautious or not engaging enough, you may be just one-sided. Talk about the good things and good things, one side how the bad things and bad things. The debate team had to do both. Compare between good and bad. Because they both exist in this world. Thank you, judges, for your feedback. Now it's time for me to announce the top two teams of today's debate. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the opening half, these top two teams will go on to the semi-final round. So let's see who they are. The top two teams are Hansong High School and Gungju National University High School. Congratulations. <laughs> So let's hear from the students, leader of opposition. You look quite surprised. We really didn't expect this. It's, it's really an honor, honor. And the deputy leader of opposition. Uh, I, well, it was the first time doing an actual debate competition for two of us. Oh, actually, we didn't expect like, this good results to come out. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that we have this. And thank you for the comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. All right, all the best for the semi-final round. Also from... Hansong Science High School, how do you guys feel? Uh, thank you so much for your support. Uh, we really did not expect this. Thank you so much. Yeah, we thought that we slipped a lot during our, our speeches and we did a lot of mistakes, but I'm surprised that we made it to the semifinals. Mm -hmm. Congratulations and all the best, and I hope you succeed in the semifinals as well. And on that happy note, I'm going to wrap up the show for today. We have more fierce debate topics coming up next week, so please do join us again then. Thanks for tuning in and goodbye. <laughs>